Can you plug my OnlyFans too? That'd be really dope if you could yeah. just. Thanks, dude. I appreciate you. I've made flour tortillas and corn tortillas, but I've never had somebody actually teach me how to do it right. So we're here with Jonathan Zaragoza, and that's exactly what he's gonna do. Teach me how to make tortillas right. Together. Together. Hell yeah. So three things that make a perfect tortilla is yep. the texture of the masa, really nicely milled. We're gonna hydrate it with some water. Grant's demoing that right here. Shaping, right? How thin we press it, the size of it. You're gonna need a bag and a tortilla press. The bag's really important, otherwise you're gonna press a really nice tortilla but never be able to get it off your machine. And then how we cook it. You need a heat source. Right now we're using a wood-fired grill behind us and some comales. So we have two here. We have a cast iron here. And then we have a clay one, very traditional. Really nice to see because it has the calcium hydroxide, kind of the cal around it, and that just acts as a non-stick surface. This so. feels very easy to break. Super easy, that's why we're <laughs> gonna use this one today. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> The first step of making really good tortillas, which is in Spanish, we call it en masando la masa, just means getting your dough ready, working it, kneading Makes it, sense. giving it some love. All right, so we're gonna pull this off just a little bit. You're just mm -hmm. guessing. But yeah, we'll do half, it's all feel, man. And usually you said it was about 50 grams or two ounces for- yeah. For like tortillas? A, yeah. Yeah, I'd, I'd say like a 50 gram, 45 gram is a good size. All right, you wanna add a little bit of water to this? <laughs> do I? I'll tell you when. Uh, Feels so right now, that's perfect. Dribbly. So yeah, right now I'm gonna show you guys like what we're dealing with here. You can see like the scraggly bits here. It's all kind of like cracking. Yeah. It's telling you that it needs water. Yeah. So I'm gonna squish it down like that and you'll see like even more cracked edges. Yeah. So you gotta think about it when you press it thinner, it's just gonna accentuate all those cracks. So you can just like rip all the way up in it. Yeah, and then yeah. it's gonna dry it on the comal. So we need some water. All right, Graham put a little bit in the bowl. Great sound, just gonna knead this. So yeah, we're just looking for the masa to kind of stick to our hands just a little bit, but not too much where it doesn't release from our hands as well. And it's not like a bread dough where it's got all this gluten and it's getting tougher and tougher and tougher and tougher. No, actually yeah. masa likes to be kneaded. Yeah. It's feeling good, man. Feeling real good. And you can see it pulled away from the bowl. Mm -hmm. You know, there's no like extra pieces around. You see that? So I'm gonna check it right now and you can see how smooth it is. See that difference, the texture difference? We'll smash it out. So there. And then I'm gonna flip it and do the old little wiggle test. So you're gonna flip it and then give it a couple. That feels good to me. Dang. I know, it's weird, right? It's like everyone has their thing like that's making tortillas, but for me that's always been like the kind of like litmus test. It's like, mm. it's still, look, but it, it'll it release in my hands pretty clean. Love it. So this is exposed to the air here, right? And we just hydrated it perfectly. Mm -hmm. It's gonna keep- it's Still drying out now. Yeah, so maybe with a, a towel with an atomizer on top. A little plastic. A little plastic, We're, we are gonna do it old school. So we're just gonna cover our bowl of masa with a uh, damp towel while we get the rest of our equipment going. So we're gonna go into shaping. Two things you need, you need a plastic bag, reuse, right, what'd you say? Reduce, reuse, recycle. I can't do That's that. That's what we learned in elementary school. Really? Yeah, but we did barely do it. Chicago public schools, man, yeah. you know what I mean? <laughs> so what I like doing is for this, kind of cut in the diameter of your pressing zone. I thought the knife was making that sound for a bit. I was like, what kind of what? knife is this? Harry Potter. Yeah, I know. I got All it right. from him. And then we're gonna cut the edges off. All right, this comes off. Boop. Okay. Boop. And then we have a tortilla press here that we're gonna press it out in. So we have our masa texture right where we want it. All we need to do is shape it. Two things that you need, a tortilla press, number one, and a plastic bag. So we're gonna start with a, I don't know, how many grams do you think that is, man? Mm, couple, 60? Couple, I feel like you, you want to do, maybe mine's a little bit. This is perfect. No, no, this is perfect. So I like Very giving it a little three finger press there and then giving it a palm. So you get oh, nice. a nice little circle shape. And then don't use all your strength. You just need a little bit there. And because a lot of these tortilla presses are a little uneven, you can give it 180 degrees because one side's thinner than the other. And then that'll kind of help us pull that perfect tortilla off of it. Okay, so our tortillas pressed out already. Let's talk about the movement going to the comal. A lot of people have different ways to do it. Um, I have a tortilla lady that works for me that does it overhand, which is usually a technique saved for flour tortillas, but it works for her. This is the way I do it. So we're gonna take our tortilla that's perfectly thinly pressed here and then go to the comal. So one thing that you need to do is kind of just come to the comal closer than you think you need to be, and then just let the wrist kind of turn away from it, and then the tortilla is gone. It's ready to be cooked. So. We're gonna get into the cooking and what you need to look for, visual cues to make sure your tortilla is perfectly cooked. Tortilla is nice and thin and pressed out. I'm gonna go to the comal here. So my motion is a little kind of flick of the wrist this way and a release. That's the way I do it. What I'm looking for is just for this to release a little bit. I can see like it's releasing. 
Komal looks a little bit hot. That's a nice color right there. That leoparding is really nice. We want that. Another important thing is to keep your Kamal clean. So if you get some of this, you can kind of just give it a wipe. Usually when you like put your tortilla on one side, it needs to recover. That side needs to recover a little bit. So then I'll flip it on another side, that'll recover. I'll flip it on the other side. So then you can have just work different zones of your Kamal. Usually at a restaurant, it's a lot bigger. This is obviously a smaller one. We can maybe fit two on here. You just kind of have to budget like your, your space here. So here I can feel like my tortilla is looking really nice and cooked. Beautiful on the outside. You know, the quintessential puff, you can use a towel like this and make it puff a little bit. But if it doesn't, it's not the biggest deal in the world. There's a lot of factors that go into making your tortilla puff. We talked about texture, so the grind, the elasticity, the moisture content, the press thickness. So there's a lot of things working against the puff. All right, let's get going on the rest of them. The Comal workflow at my restaurant is a one person station. They have their press here, they have their masa to their left and then they have their finishing basket or where the tortillas end up after the comal. The comal will be on their right. So we'll press it out and then the tortilla from the press will go to the right. From the comal on the right, they will go into the basket. It does take a lot of practice, but that's the way we do it at our restaurant. So again, on here, you're looking for the tortilla to release from the comal. Kind of get your finger under there and feel for it. That one's gonna release and then you flip it over. And again, this has to do with a lot of surface temperature. I can tell by the tortilla here I have some uncooked spots. That means my comal is a little too hot. You want it to be a little bit cooler than this surface temp wise. This way you just kind of have an even cooking surface and it's not too hot or too cold. So we got our tortillas in front of us. We got three things working with what we just have. So masa texture, proper hydration, masa grind is very important. And then pressing it, so getting it super thin on the tortilla press with the plastic on there, the shape of it, and also the cooking. So you want a comal that's around, you know, like maybe 400 degrees surface temp, or just hot enough to get it cooked. Then you're looking for visual cues, so just when it starts releasing from the pan around the edge, it's good for the first flip, and then same thing on the other side, and feeling around, and you know, it's a lot of feel. So I'm gonna show you how my grandma used to serve the tortilla. So when I serve it at the restaurant, first of all, when you grab tortillas out of a pile, don't never grab the top one because the warmest one's right in the middle. And so this is your tortilla. You see it's steaming still. And when we serve it at the restaurant, this side's facing up. When we're ready to plate, we plate on this side, the cara. We're gonna season it with salt. This is what my, what my grandma used to do. And then it might be a little bit too much salt, but never, right? There's different ways to eat a tortilla. You can roll it like that and then squish it. She used to squish it like that. There you go. And then that's your burro. I love these things. This is what happens when you take a lesson from a pro. I probably learned about 20 things today about tortillas, but I think we're packing probably like four or five of them into the video. Make sure to go to chefsups.com. We got a whole package on masa and tortilla making. You can get a lot of Jonathan's recipes there too. Mmm, tortillas, bro. Let's get it. Love it. These are really good. Subscribe to our channel and visit chefsteps.com for more tips, recipes, guides, and tools to help you level up in the kitchen.